Zeely? Yeah. Glad you're okay. <laughs> Thank goodness for that hit, huh? <laughs> Thank goodness for that hit, right? Right? I took the hit right here. See? Uh -huh. I feel like I got this. I got a bump through it. Let's go ahead and. Is that going? Yeah. Okay, let's all please rise for the opening of scripture. Um, we'll be reading from 1 John. Now we're, we're going to uh, second chapter. It's potentially one of my favorite verses out of the whole book. Starting at verse 1. My children, I am writing these things to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an intercessor with the Father, the righteous Messiah Yeshua. He is the atonement for our sins, and not only for our sins, but also for the whole world. Now we know that we have come to know Him by this, if we keep His instructions. The one who says, I have come to know Him, and does not keep His instructions, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. But whoever keeps His word in Him, the love of God is truly made perfect. We know that we are in Him by this. Whoever claims to abide in Him must walk as He did. Loved ones, I am not writing you something new, but something from the beginning. An old command. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father God, may this command continually be made new through our lives and our actions, through our words and our thoughts. May we be considerate, good sons and daughters, servants of your kingdom. We pray this blessing over each and every person here and all the people who are watching or will watch at home. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, what to expect today? We read the Torah scroll, the first five books of the Holy Scriptures, over one full year, each week having its own reading. We are a multilingual congregation using English, Hebrew, and Spanish. The prayers and blessings are led by our cantoral team. Many parts are interactive, so we all worship together. Traditional greetings are Shabbat Shalom or Good Shabbos, which means may you have a peaceful Sabbath. And the uh, blowing of the shofar is a call to assembly and worship. Please stand if possible as those trained with shofar come forward. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Baruch Amen. Blessed you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commands us here to hear the call of the shofar. Amen. in our Messiah, Yeshua. Yeshua walked among us, filled with your spirit, the only one who ever fulfilled your Torah, 
He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of our people sought his touch. He taught as no man taught. With authority, he brought forth the treasures of the Torah. How the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean. How the despised and outcasts found love and release from their sins. How the hypocrites feared him, whose words uncovered their sin. Despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray, turned everyone to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name, we are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who has given us Messiah Yeshua, our King. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Blessed is he. Amen. And the motto group. Motto for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs, for Adonai is a great God and a great king above all gods. Blessed be his name. Please show me for the Nikamaka. Oh, say. 
instrument for the Lekharuri. The only God caused us to hear in a single utterance. The Lord is one, and his name is one, for his renown and his glory and his praise. Come, my beloved, to welcome the bride, the presence of Shabbat we receive. Come, my beloved, shake off the dust, arise, dress in garments of glory, my people. Through the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, redemption draws near to my soul. Come, my beloved, wake up. Wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken, sing a song. For the glory of the Lord is revealed to you. Come, my beloved. Amen. Amen.
beginning with Ain Kelavinu, which we will get you an English translation for. Thanks. <laughs> what department is that? What department is that? Media? Is that what you're doing now? Ain Kelavinu, Ain Kelavinu, Ain Kelavinu. Oh, God. 
master of all, to describe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the lands, and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs, and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow, and acknowledge our thanks before the King of our kings, the Holy One. Blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation, and seated his glories in the heavens above, in the presence of his powers in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him. As it is written in his Torah, and you shall know this day and take to heart that the Lord he is God, in the heavens above and on the earth below there is none other. And it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the world. On that day the Lord will be one, and his name will be Amen. Join me for the Ed Donald Arm. Show 
shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. <clears throat> you did not give it, O Lord our God, to the nations of the land, nor did you make it an inheritance, our king, of the worshippers of graven idols. For to Israel your people have you given it in love to the seed of Yaakov, whom you have chosen. The people that sanctify the seventh, they will all be satisfied and delighted from your goodness. And the seventh, you found favor in it and sanctified it. Most coveted of days, you called it a remembrance of the act of creation. Our God and the God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant our share in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and gladden us with your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you sincerely. O Lord our God, with love and favor, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage. And may Israel, the sanctifiers of your name, rest in it. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Thank you for showing respect uh, to the word of God as the Torah scroll is brought out by facing the scroll during the procession. <clears throat> Come forward, Zili, daughter of Sarah, to the Torah. There is none like you, O Lord, among the gods that are worshipped, and there are no deeds like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Source of mercy, let your goodness be a blessing to Zion. Let Yerushalayim be rebuilt. In you alone do we trust, O sovereign God, high and exalted Lord of all the worlds. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moshe would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies, and may those who hate you run from you. Torah will go forth out of Zion, and the Lord's word from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave Torah to his people Israel.
Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of B'nai Israel and tell them, You shall be Kedoshim, for I am your God. And will now be reading 20, verse 23 to 27. You are not to walk in the ways of the nation which I am casting out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I avoid them. But I have said to you, You will inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am Adonai your God, who has set you apart from the also, you are to make a distinction between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean bird and the clean. And you are not to make your soul detestable by an animal or by a bird, or by anything with which the ground teems, which I have set apart as unclean for you. You are to be holy to me, for I as an I am holy, and have set you apart from the people, so that you would be mine. A man or woman who is a medium or is a soothsayer shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with rocks, and their blood shall be on them. <coughs> Um, 
And this is the Torah that Moshe placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moshe's hand. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Bimbiim Tovim, Ratsa Bedivirem Hanev Marim Be'emet. Baruch Ata Adonai, Habucher Ba'atorah Uv Moshe Avo, Uv Israel Amo, Uvin Bi'ech HaEmet Ba'atzedet. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with their words which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moshe, your people Israel, and your prophets of truth and righteousness. And today's reading will be uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 2 through 20, and Amos chapter 9, verses 7 through 15. Adonai came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the elders of Israel. Say to them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Have you come to inquire of me? As I live, it is a declaration of Adonai. I will not be inquired of by you. Will you judge them, son of man? Will you judge them? Make them know the detestable practices of their fathers? Say to them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, on the day I chose Israel, I lifted up my hand to see the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known to them in the land of Egypt. I lifted up my hand to them, saying, I am Adonai your God. On that day, I lifted up my hand to them to bring them out of the land of Egypt to a land that I had sought out for them, flowing with milk and honey, the splendor of all lands, I said to them, Each of you must throw away every detestable thing from his eyes and not defile yourself with the idols of Egypt. I am Adonai your God. But they rebelled against me and were unwilling to listen to me. None of them cast away the detestable things that were before their eyes, nor did they forsake their idols of Egypt. So I resolved to pour out my fury upon them to expend my anger upon them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I acted for the sake of my name, to keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations, where they were, in whose sight I made myself known to them, to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So I let them out from the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my laws and taught them my judgments, which if a man does, he will live by them. I also gave them my Shabbat as a sign between me and them so that they would know that I am Adonai who made them holy. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my statutes. They rejected my judgments, which if a man does, he will live by them. They greatly profaned my Shabbat, my Shabbat. Then I resolved to pour out my fury on them in the wilderness to consume them. But for the sake of my name, I did what I would, I did what would keep it from being profane in the eyes of the nations, in the eyes of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. Yet I also lifted my hand to them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey which is the splendor of all lands. For they rejected my laws and did not walk in my rulings and profane my Shabbat. For their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them from destruction. So I did not make a full end of them in the wilderness. I said to their children in the wilderness, do not walk in the statutes of your fathers. Do not keep their ordinances and do not defile yourself with their idols. I am Adonai your God. Walk in my statutes. 
keep my ordinances and do them. Keep my Shabbat, Shabbat holy so they will be a sign between me and you and you may know that I am Adonai your God. chapter 9 verse 7 are you not like the children of the Cushites to me the Israel it is the declaration of Adonai did I not bring Israel up from the land of Egypt the Philistines from Kaftor and Aram from Kir behold the eyes of my Lord Adonai are on the sinful kingdom so I will utterly destroy it from the face of the earth Nevertheless, I will not annihilate the house of Jacob. It is a declaration of Adonai. For behold, I have commanded, and I will shake the house of Israel among the nations, like grain being tossed in a sieve, without a pebble falling to the ground. By the sword shall all the sinners of my people die. Those who say the calamity will not overtake or confront us. In that day, I will raise up David's falling sukkah. I will restore its breaches, raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old, so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations called by my name. It is a declaration of Adonai, the one who will do this. Behold, days are soon coming. It is a declaration of Adonai when the plowman will overtake the reaper, and the one treading grapes, and the one sowing seed. The mountains will drip sweet wine, and all the hills will melt over. Yes, I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. They will rebuild desolate cities and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will also make gardens and eat their fruit. Yes, I will plant them on their land, and they will never again be plucked up out of their land that I have given to them. Adonai, your God, has said it. Amen. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu nolek haolam, Sirkol ha olamim tzadek, tzadek, Bechol ha darot, ha el, ha neeman, Haomer, Os Vaose, Hamdeber, Umkayim, Shikol de Devarov, Emet, Batsede, Neeman, Ata, Hua Adonai, Elohena, Vene Emanim, Enamim, Vivarecha, Devar, Echad, Vivarecha, Ato, Loyashu. Leikam, Yel Melek, Neeman, Rahaman, Ata, Baruch, Ata Adonai, Hael, Ha Neeman, Behol, Ivrav. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, Rock of all eternities, faithful in all generations, the trustworthy God, who says and does, who speaks and make it come to pass. All, whose, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, O Lord our God, and faithful are your words, for not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled, for you are a faithful and compassionate God and King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, the God who is faithful in all his words. Amen.
Yeshua said to them, Isn't this the reason that you've gone astray? Because you don't understand the scriptures or the power of God? For when they rise up from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But concerning the dead being raised, haven't you read in the book of Moses about the burning bush? How God said to him, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Have you gone astray? One of the Torah scholars came and heard them debating, seeing what Yeshua had answered them was well. He asked him, which commandment is first of all? Yeshua answered, the first is Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the Torah scholar said to him. You have spoken the truth, that he is Echad, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart, with all understanding, with all the strength. And to love the neighbor as oneself is much more than a burnt offering and sacrifices. Then Yeshua saw that he had answered wisely, and he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared any longer to question him. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the truth and has planted everlasting life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. support her are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Return us to you, O Lord, and we shall return. Renew our days as in the days of old. <clears throat> and may he who blessed our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, bless those who have come to honor God and the Torah. May the Holy One send blessings upon them and upon their families and upon all the works of their hands. Amen. May our eyes behold your return to Zion in compassion. Blessed are you, O Lord, who restores his presence to Zion. 
grant peace, goodness, and blessing, grace, kindness, and mercy to us and to all your people in Israel. Bless us, our Father, all of us together through the light of your presence. Truly through the light of your presence, Adonai, our God, you gave us a Torah of life, love of kindness, justice, and blessing, mercy, life, and peace. May you see fit to bless your people Israel at all times, at every hour with your peace. Shabbat Shuvah, and scribe us for life. Blessing, peace, and prosperity, remembering all your people Israel for life and peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of peace. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable before you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I
continue with the service. If we can ask uh, Sister Zeely to come forward and pray for the tithes and offerings, that would be a huge blessing. What an amazing privilege that would be. Praise be. Yeah, come on. You, just, you are the one. That's right, darling. That's right. You are the one. Point at yourself again. You are the one. All right. Whoever has the, their, their sound connected, please lower that. Thank you. Okay, you can just do it from up there, right in front of the camera. Here you go. Right here. Here you go. Really, the ones at home can't see you. They can see you. They need to see you. What a wonder it is to see you, right? Praise God. Go ahead. Amen. Are you ready? Please put this. Please join me. Thank you for the offering. We thank you, Father, for bringing us all here today safely. Um, we thank you for giving us the means to survive and, and be blessed here on this earth. Um, we thank you that uh, for being with us as we go about our days, and we ask that you stay with us throughout the rest of this week that we're going into, um, that you help us all to have what we need, um, to have our, all of our um, necessities provided for, and um, that you bless your ministry, that it can continue to grow and to reach all the people that you need it to reach. Um, we ask that you bless those who give and um, that their, their offering be multiplied to build up your kingdom and to bless your people. Amen. Wow, uh, you are the one, right? Amen. Uh, those of you watching at home or as you're traveling uh, on the highways and byways and the outermost places, uh, the link will be placed in the comment section for those of you who are moved to contribute uh, whatever your portion is for this Omer season, for this Sabbath. With that being said, let's go ahead and get right into the Word. Amen? Amen. So before we do, no, I'll do the announcements afterwards. Okay. So this week's Torah portion is Kedushim, which means what? What does what Kadosh mean? What does Kadosh mean? Holy. Holy. And Kedushim is? Holy One. Holy One. Oh, so that's some people just study. <laughs> so this week's Torah portion, it not only teaches us about Sorry. I'm glad you're excited. Woo! <laughs> 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 All right. It not only teaches us the basics of getting along with one's neighbor, but it also sets the basic rules of behavior that set up the moral standard, right? This is what this week's Torah portion does. This is the under or the genesis of moral behavior. So which sets up for social etiquette. It starts out with starts out with verses like, you shall not be a gossip monger. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. And you shall not take revenge. The Torah tells us rather we are to reprove our fellow believer. So if, if we're required, according to Torah, to reprove each other, this kind of goes against, yeah, just let them do what they want and how they want it, right? It almost goes directly against that, right? So the Torah is, part of the Torah's whole point is for us to be involved with humanity, right? For us to be involved with the nations, for us to create space for him to dwell with us wherever we may be. Let me go further on. So the idea of live and let live is foreign to faith. I mean actual faith, it is foreign to this, right? Because we know what God requires, we know what God demands, but we know what God even desire, right? It's all written here. It's, it's not a mystery. It's here. 
If you're trying to figure it out, look through the book. It's, it's there many, many times. <clears throat> As proof of this, in the very next verse, it says, You shall not stand idly by your brother's blood. What does this mean? You shall not stand idly by your brother's blood. Help others. Help, huh? Help your somebody suffering. Yeah. Now, now, here's the thing, because a lot of people will use it. They'll use this right here, right? They will. And it will give them a, a rationale to gossip, right? Watch. I'll show you an example. Brother Tony, you know, Brother Eli called... Called the, he, he messaged in the tribe that they needed help, right? That's gossip, right? Is it? <laughs> Isn't it? Right. But, all right, go further on with it. You know that brother. He can never do anything on his own. I know. You know? You know? <laughs> <laughs> they, and, and just, but it, it goes on, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not saying that he is. <laughs> I did pray for God to speak to Rabbi. <laughs> so maybe this might be saying something. <laughs> hey, so, <laughs> so spiritual distress is just as grievous, according to the Torah, as physical distress. So if somebody is under physical adversement, or they're under some, some heavy pressure physically. Spiritually, that's just as important to us in the kingdom, right? Because those things plague on the mind, and then, then they begin to cause people to worship other things, bringing them back to the days of Egypt, right, where they're worshiping other things, and not God. It's not by coincidence that Brother Tony in, in the half of portion says, and he, and the other nations that are his also, right? The other branches of his tree. Let me go further on. Just as we cannot stand idly by when somebody is drowning, so too when someone is drowning spiritually, we have a responsibility to act to pray, to praise, and even to worship God in those moments. Yes. To act, to pray, to praise, and to worship. Right? Yes. What, what's in that mix again? Act, pray, praise, and worship. There you go, right? It, basically, you can mix around that order, but it all has to be done within... Uh, let me go on. Yeshua says not to let the sun fall upon you, and you haven't resolved it. The Torah goes into that again in this very Torah portion. How long, if you take a peace offering, how long do you have to make to finish it? According to this Torah portion, how long, what, when's the furthest you can get away with not doing it? <laughs> so the Torah says even if some of the peace offering you say till the next day that's fine but if by the third day it's considered unkosher no good no good invalid you waited too long right so if you take that, that physical example and apply it spiritually or emotionally if you and your brother, and you want to make a peace because there's an issue between you, you should not let it continue, right? But rather, first or second day, handle it, move on. Right? No? No? I guess, yes. all right. Yes. So, the Torah's view is equivalent. They are equivalent, the physical distress and spiritual. So we must act. So does the Torah more than just tell us to admonish? It tells us how. It tells us how to admonish things, right? How to become holy. How to admonish sin. How to walk in goodness. And it actually tells us all that in this very portion. All the ethical behaviors, all the moral behaviors, it's right here this week. 
And if you didn't catch that, you need to reread it, okay? So let me go into it. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, right? Reprove. You shall surely reprove him and do not bear sin upon him. So if I, if, say, Brother Tony corrects me, right? Because I'm, I don't know, I ate too much hummets, right? Really? The apple of my eye is what you say? Rude. And, and you're the little, the little silver lining for us. Yes, you are. All right, there we go. Let me move on. All right. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. Reprove him. Truly, you shall reprove him and do not bear sin upon him. And if, if I have done this and brother is correcting me about it, he can't hold it against me any longer. Right? I, he can't hold it against me. You know, if, you know, if, if something else had happened and you have to kind of rebuke or correct or, or encourage, you cannot keep reminding the person about their deficit. Right? What is their, you can't keep reminding them of their error. Because how are they supposed to move beyond it if you still have not? How many people here are holding things against other people still? How many people online are still holding things against other people still? If you have already presented what your issue is with the other person, you have not made a peace between you, give it over to God and let it go. But you must first attempt to reprove or bridge y'all's relation. Okay? The words, do not bear him the sin, this verse is telling us much more. It is telling us not to focus on the act of the sin itself when admonishing someone. But rather, the Torah wants us to find a positive aspect that will raise the holy soul from the murky depths. Right? We don't want the person to be just beaten down with our correction. No. You want to give them a better way to get out of the issue that they're in, right? Something positive. You know, if you see somebody eating way too many Cheetos, you know, you suggest that they do something else with their nervous <coughs> time, right? Like, I don't know, go for a walk around the block. Maybe that'll help you in your blood pressure, right? <laughs> something. But we, we give them something positive to focus on through the issue. Instead of, you know, you're doing this and that's, you know, you're going to go straight to hell or whatever phrase we want to use. Um, because that doesn't help anybody. Not really. The Torah wants us to find a positive aspect that will raise that person from focusing on their deficit. <coughs> How many times when you, when you make a mistake, do you dwell on that for a while? Hey, look, everybody generally does it, okay? They make a mistake, they, they dwell, they dwell, they dwell, right? So, in it, we, we, we're not allowed to do that. We have to find a positive solution from the action and move forward. It is easy, it is easy, easy, easy. Yeah, it is. Um, how easy would it be if we if we could just sit back and name all the faults of everybody that we care about? Would that be easy? Mm -hmm. Right? It'd be a long list. Zilly, Zilly. No, no, no. Fingers <laughs> off, fingers off the face. Okay. <laughs> I have an investment there. No, no, no. All right. 
but it would, it would be fairly easy to point out everybody's misdeeds, right? Point out everybody's errors, right? That'd be too, but that's not what the Torah asks us to do. The Torah doesn't say, hey, let me point out all your flaws. Yeshua doesn't say, let me point out all your flaws. Certainly, Yeshua didn't point out any of your flaws when he accepted you, right? Wait, let's see. Anna, did Yeshua say, you know, you're going to have to stop playing with stuffed animals before you walk with me? Mm -hmm. No? no? He, he, didn't, he didn't say you can no longer be you know, binging on uh, ice? No. no? Okay. And I mean the one that used to be water, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Before you start getting NA and AA pamphlets in your way. It is easy to enumerate and, and count friends and family members' misdeeds and their, and their errors that you find. And it's perhaps even easier to tell them off at every given turn. Instead of just hearing them out, you shut them off with a cold response. It's much easier to do that. But this isn't the goal. In the book of Mishael, Rabbi Akiva tells us on his comments of Proverbs 24, verse, 20, chap, verse, chap 24, verse 24, he who acclaims evildoers as righteous will be cursed. So whoever says what is good, what is bad, whoever says something that is bad is good, will be cursed. And this comes straight from Proverbs. But those who admonish will be blessed. Those who are willing to correct, those who are willing to, to inspire, encourage, lift up, will be blessed. The two verses work in unity. They teach us that false, through, though false flattery is not good, especially when we try and use it to correct people. You know, you know Phil, you're, 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 you're really a brilliant guy, but, right, that's, that's no, don't do that, right? Don't, don't give them false flattery. But like we said in the beginning, find something positive in that error that they can focus to get out of it, right? Let me go further on. <clears throat> the Torah wants us to build up people, to elevate them. Instead of thrusting the burden of their sins upon them, they already know what their sins are, right? We don't have to beat them with the same stuff. In this manner, we won't be bullying them or, or attempting to dominate them in some weird fashion, but actually we'll be building them, right? Which is the goal, is to build brothers and sisters, build a kahila, build a community, build a nation, right? And you cannot do that by bullying or by uh, playing the victim either. So let's go further on. For when finding faults in others, we bear a great responsibility. Not only do we bear the difficult and sensitive burden of proofing the fault, but we also bear the burden and responsibility of reproofing it, fixing it, right? Correcting it. And it, it's not to be done with a heavy hand. Because surely, I'm going to tell some of you, if God had used a heavy hand on you, you wouldn't be here. Right? But actually, He guided you and corrected you with love and gentleness. And I know sometimes, you know, that, that, that love may have seemed a, a bit sober, because it should be. Right? Love should be sober. You should have clear conscience that you love someone. You should have clear conscience that you're doing right by people. Right? You should have that sober, that clarity of mind. Let me go on. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Or do you not know that the righteous, unrighteous, will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor the adulterers, nor men who practice detestable things, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards. Now those of you watching, some of you are only going to point at ones of these that you like and don't like. But it, he mentions all of these. And later the prophets add to this, but let me, actually they added to this before, but let me continue on. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Were is the key word. It doesn't matter if you did all this before, you now walk with God, right? So now and every day thereafter counts. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah, and by the Spirit of our Elohim. Praise God. When you entered into the covenant, He cleansed you. He took you in. He made you His. He gave you a name, a place, a destiny, a destination. Let me go on. In Vayikra 19 and 18, it's almost exactly what was read earlier. You shall not take revenge. You shall not bear a grudge against the members of your people. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Elohim. You shall not bear a grudge against members of your people. Does this mean you get to bear a grudge against others who aren't your people? No. No? No. Okay. Rabbi Hirsch, he, he, I'm going to read a quote from Rabbi Hirsch. When he gets to that, in that same verse that we just read, the word Bereacha, where is that, what, what blessing is that in? What word? Ah, something there, right? So, the word Lereacha, to your neighbor, indicates that the responsibility to love your neighbor as yourself is non-specific in practice, but generalized in its approach. In other words, it is not the person himself, but everything that pertains to the person, all his conditions of life, the, the, the triumphs and the, and the tragedies, the, the victories and the losses, which make up his position in the world. To this, to his victories and his losses, we are to give our love as if it were our own. So when our neighbor has a loss, we mourn with them as if it's our very own loss. If they have success and are promoted, we celebrate their promotion as if it is our own, right? This is how we build brothers and sisters, by taking what their values are and having compassion for those. Let me continue on. We are to rejoice in their good fortune, and we are to grieve over their misfortune as if it were our own. We are to assist in everything that furthers a person's well-being. Now this isn't according to the world standards. It's according to God's standards, according to scriptural standards, right? Yes. 
It, it is in part of this that whenever anybody has a desire to serve in the kingdom, Ishkana will say yes, right? Because they should, right? Help them grow in any way possible. That is good. We are to assist at everything that furthers a person's well-being as if we were working for ourselves. And we must keep trouble away as if the trouble is threatening our very selves. What's the best way to keep trouble away? What do you think? What's the best way to keep trouble away? Don't be around it. Don't looking for it. <clears throat> yeah. Don't go looking for it. Don't be around it. Take a, take a nap. <laughs> do good. Right? Do good. Do good. You won't have time for trouble. You won't. You won't. There's only so many hours in a day and I ain't got time for it. Right? So, do good. Focus on good. Uh, if you're really, really feeling an itch to do something terrible, Call up one of the brothers. Ask them about their day. Let them tell you all about their day. You probably won't feel like you're in tr trouble anymore. Let's go further on. There is a saying that unless, and I, I hope you all are hearing me, there is a saying that unless you handle things with grace, then the problem will stay in your face. That's how the saying goes. So you have to be able to handle even difficult and oh, moments with grace. Uh, if not, it, it is, some say, set to repeat itself throughout your life. Um, I'll let you know if I repeat that, okay? So, all right. Are you going through it? Or are you growing through it is the question. As you're going through the tests and the trials that God sends our way, or that we self-impose upon our lives, are we growing through it? Or are we just walking through it? That way, next year, the same season, you'll walk through it again. Next year, the same season, you'll walk through it again. Next, Because it becomes part of your path, right? You just keep repeating it instead of saying, hey, hold up, how can I grow through this issue? Some teach we... Oh wait, let, let, me put, let me put it in better content. Some, some say that we should be content that we have heaven as a reward. And that should be, that should be all we need, right? We should, that's all we need. Heaven's our reward, what else do we need? But that's, that's almost completely against Judaism. Because Judaism says in all the branches from orthodox to progressive, and even some messianic, we are God's partners. We are his hands and feet. We are his prized creation. So if this is true, then it fits what our design is. We are designed to worship him, right? We're designed to fellowship with him. We're designed to serve Him. So these trials, these lessons, the ones sent by the King, are ultimately designed to make you mature. They're designed to make you grow. They're designed to make you produce goodness. A seedling does not change to a full-grown plant until it leaves its safety net. It has to push past that hard shell. And I'm sure, of course, nobody here 
But many people out there have some very thick shells, right? Very, um, I think Hispanics in, in Texas, they have a wonderful phrase, the cabezudo, right? <coughs> and so this is um, most people's hard shell. And yet the, the lessons that God sends your way are designed to create in you a productive son, a productive daughter who produces good fruit year in, year out. In and out of season, you're producing good fruit. So a seedling cannot produce fruit. I'm sure there are some cases where some scientists have made that happen, but in God's time, it doesn't, right? So understand, you're not going to begin to grow fruit until you until you leave your shell, also, right? Understand what I'm saying. Your doubt, your uncertainty, your Assumptions are paralyzing you from the blessing and promotion that he has had for you all this time. Again, your fear, your uncertainty, your doubt, your gossiping are all paralyzing you from being promoted. They're paralyzing you from going to the next level in your life. So keep pressing forward and grow through the process. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be sober. Oh, somebody know that verse. Wait, is that sometimes? All the time. All the time. Have clarity of mind, right? Set your hope fully on God that will be brought, that on grace, that will be brought to you at the revelation of Messiah. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also shall be holy. In all your conduct. Well, Peter really hits it right there. In all your conduct. That means not just at the, the, the house that's hosting us, but everywhere, right? Yes. Well, what is holiness? What is holiness? If, I, if you could step, step, summarize holiness in two words, what would you say? Set apart. Set apart. Okay. What Keeping else? God's law. Huh? Keeping God's law. Keeping God's law. Okay. What about you, Mr. Phil? Two words, holiness. Go. Um. More than two words. Give me one. Um, <laughs> keeping God's law is obeying. No, the question was, was holiness. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Wrong question. No worries. Anna, what's holiness? Um, being set apart. Oh yeah, you already said it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. God says in, in the Torah, in last week's Torah portion that if you stand upright before Him, He will consider you holy. That's it, honestly. Honestly, all of God's commands can be summed up in, in two, and holiness can be summed up into one. 
Stand upright before God. Stand upright before God, love Him with all that you are, and love your neighbor and yourself. Right? Simple. But we complicate it so much. In John 4, verse 21, Yeshua said, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither this mountain, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. So, See, that's uh, guys. Y'all say this phrase with me. Mayut. Mayut. Derek. Derek. Eretz. Eretz. Y'all know what Eretz is. You should, right? What is it? The earth. The earth. Okay. What's Derek? It's okay. I'm going to give it to you. All right. Anybody else want to try? No? It's Derek. Uh, that's a guy you used to work for. But... <laughs> so it translates in English to limiting one's involvement with worldly concerns. The, the word mayut comes from the Hebrew word in my intent, which means a little or minimum. So the whole phrase is for us to limit how much like Egypt we're willing to become. How much of their practices, how much of their behaviors, how much of their understandings we're, we're going to include in our lives. It should be limited. Limited, right? And I say that not to be mean towards those who live a fully secular life, but it, it's really hard, and Scripture even says you cannot serve two masters. Right? So you have to choose. You're going to be godly or worldly. Scripturally, He'll allow for you to have a little bit of worldliness. But that's it. Right? It's like under 10%, something like that. But let me go further on. In Proverbs 3 and 3, let kindness and truth never leave your never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them upon the tablet of your heart. Then you will gain favor and a good name in the eyes of God and man. You and I are being called to rise up as sons and daughters of the king, to rise up as his servants. To raise one another up in love, in forgiveness. To raise one another up in goodness. Rabbi Akiva said it this way. How fortunate are you, O Israel? <clears throat> Before whom you are purified and who purifies you. It is your Father in heaven. As it is stated in Ezekiel 36 and 25, I will sprinkle purifying water upon you and you shall be pure. Finally, in Leviticus, 
back in Leviticus 19, speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I am holy. For I am the Lord your God, and I am holy. Everyone of you shall revere his mother and father, and you shall keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to make idols for yourselves of any cast metal. For I am the Lord your God. When you offer sacrifices of peace, you shall offer it so that you may be accepted. And it shall be eaten that same day. Again, you, when you make an offering of peace, you have to do it within those two days. Right? Don't wait. Don't rest. Because part of it, remember, is whatever you measure out is measured back to you. So if you do not have peace between you and another child of God, what are you measuring out there? Headache. <laughs> right? You're not, you're not measuring anything good for yourself in that instance. Right? So you, you have to kind of go past that. With that being said, uh, blessed are you that are here and those of you online, all of you individually and collectively who he has chosen. I want you to be encouraged to raise each other. Encourage each other. Uplift one another. Share the goodness. Share the praise of our God. We thank you, Elohim, for each and every person here, and we thank you for each person who will watch this. May God bless you and keep you this year. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. 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 Alright, um... Ready? Okay, um... If, yeah, the, the... Wait, are you, you going to do it? No, you're going to <laughs> I like that. That's good. Thank you, guys. That's good. Yeah. All right. You ready? Please don't rise. leaders of our faith and of, of our world. Alright, y'all ready?
Thank you. 